So we're side by side on your screen? On my screen, we're side by side. Okay. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Codependent Knitters podcast. This is episode 52. And I'm here with my friend Lisa. And I'm here with my friend Dawn. We're not going to point anymore because it's never right when it's recorded. <laughs> um, I'm coming to you from Sarnia, Ontario. And I'm coming from. Uh, Muskoka, Ontario, and together we're the codependent knitters. Hmm. Yes. And um, we haven't been here for a while, and this is kind of a jam-packed episode. <laughs> but uh, we're we're kind of our lives have kind of settled down a bit, so we're going to try and get back to um, something a little more semi-regular. Regular. <laughs> yeah. So it's. It's been a few months, eh? It has been. It's, it's been, been a while. A few months. It's been a few months. My, um, for those of you that are friends with me on, well, in real life, but as well as Facebook and Instagram, um, my dad passed away a couple of weeks ago. So I just wanted to thank everyone for the messages, um, the notes. I mean, people I've met only online, people I've never met. Um, it was really, it's very thoughtful and appreciated. Thank you. Um, so it's pretty amazing the support yeah you know yeah yeah Yeah. I wasn't I wasn't as close with my dad um but it's you know it's still tough to go through all that and um knitting definitely knitting is therapy for me it it's good to be back talking to Lisa on screen and and talking about knitting and happy things and And doing knitting So yeah. And doing it. Yeah. So we've been busy. Now we we did did have the opportunity to see each other though. We did get together. Yeah. We've been together a couple of times since we recorded last. And that was amazing. That warmed my heart. It was good. Yes. So the first time was we went to um, make one Guelph and uh, Twin Oaks was having a pop-up shop there. Yeah. So Twin Oaks Farm is an Ontario farm. Um, I think very close to, she's out in the country somewhere near Guelph. And she has yarn from her own sheep. And it's nice. It's not, there's woolier wools or what I call woolly wool. And there's definitely some that. Those um, are pretty close in color for us. I could wear. Yeah. I, I, I might have that color I'm not sure yeah anyways so we bought I bought a sweater quantity you did too right I think we bought the same stuff I think we did too yeah this isn't this isn't my sweater quantity this is another skein uh but we had a really good day it was it was rainy in the morning but it it kind of settled down right by the time we got there and uh good we got it was good good to see people we ventured out for lunch and that was kind of nice yeah. for dinner. Met up, yeah. met up with a few friends and stayed overnight. We actually got a hotel room just near um, near St. Jacobs and stayed yeah. overnight. And yeah. yeah, it was it was good. That was really yeah. And then very exciting. Oh, so, for me. <laughs> it's very exciting. Our house forever. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. Related to that. Um, Ooh. Oh, Thank I do you. have, Lisa, I think we did buy the same. Mine's maybe darker. This is what I bought. This is my sweater quantity. And I think it's like a DK weight. Yeah. DK three ply. Oh, see, mine is the worsted three ply. And mine's okay. Mine might be darker. It, yeah, it mine's is darker. Than lighter. It, it is. Yeah. Okay. And, and then I have the lighter color to do color work. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah. I, I found out that evening that I won the, they had a door prize. Right. And right. so there was um, a tote bag full of goodies. There was mm. I didn't uh, this see skein. You got. That's nice. This skein of three ply yarn. Mm-hmm. 
These are the tote. It's a Twin Oaks tote bag. Yay. So I actually got a tote bag. So did I. I purchased. Apparently when you, it's, nice. a, it's sturdy. Like it's a heavy duty material. It is. It's a very sturdy canvas. So that, and let's put my glasses over there. I got, um, the, a making magazine nice number 10 so I love this one because it's got these these are actually mittens oh right that's right you Which were talking is, about those mittens yeah um so this was really nice to receive and making magazine like a lot of yarn stores will carry making and line on and those kind of magazines mm -hmm. um pom-pom so if you've never seen, so the other ones are mostly all knitting, I think, but making is kind of all kinds of making. So there's a lot of knitting, but there's other things in here too. And there's some sewing and embroidery. So they're really nice magazines and they're definitely ones that you keep and you could just look through and mm -hmm. make a lot of different things out of them. So yeah, I mean, check them out if you've never, if you've never, considered any of these sort of um they're called magazines but they're like a trade yeah like almost like a trade paperback with very heavy earbook and there's so much in them so I think they're really worth their price because of the amount of patterns and information now, that are in them the one thing I like about some of them magazines like pom-pom lane is they actually have the patterns revert back to the designer yeah after a certain amount of time and that's always nice to see and it's yeah. very supportive for the designers. Yeah. <clears throat> also, just quickly, there was a little package of little stitch markers. Oh, those are so cute. Or, yeah, stitch markers and soak, lotion, oh. and liquid in the uh, yuzu. So, because I bought a bunch of yarn and also received a tote bag, um, we decided we're going to, I'm going to take, you're going to get the tote bag, yarn, the soak. And we're going to do a giveaway on Instagram, this one on Instagram. So we'll be doing that after this episode comes out. So if you're not on, if you're following or if you're on Instagram and not following us, follow us um, so that you don't miss this. And if you are not on Instagram, um, you should check it out. It's a lot. I like it a lot better than Facebook. I spend way more time on Instagram. Yes. I, th I find it's easy to just swipe away because you don't have to read anything. Yeah. What else did we do? We, the second time we met up was Woolstock in yeah. Paris. And I got to meet Marianne. Hi, Marianne. Miss you already. So that was good. That was I, really nice. Yeah. My sister Marianne came for a visit from Manitoba and uh, yeah, we went to Woolstock and we also did a couple visits to the little red mitten. We did some knitting with uh, the St. Thomas group outside the mitten and came away with some goodies. Um, so from the mitten, we're actually both going to make the gold wing sweater. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> she was working um, in that. She's already started hers. I'm waiting on some yarn, so I have it started. I know she, she'd probably be done by now, but she was waiting for me. So go ahead and just go ahead, Marianne. <laughs> <laughs> right. But that's the gold wing by Jen Steingass. Um, how, did you, how did you like wool, wool stock this year? I liked it. I liked it. Um, the one uh, in what, when it's in Woodstock, it used to be my favorite. The only thing was I found it very um, crowded when it was in Woodstock. I did mm -hmm. like how it seemed like it was more spaced out because it was in different buildings. Um, I didn't know if they had the livestock the way they usually do. If that was in a building we didn't go to or what. I think there was, yeah, I think there was one more building that did mm -hmm. have a few other things. We did that. The one at the far end, we didn't get to it. But, yeah, but yeah. it was, it was good. It was really good. Yeah. Did you like I it? I felt it was very, it, yeah. It, it, first of all, it was good to be back and it felt safe. Mm -hmm. They not only did they require proof of vaccination, they did temperature checks mm -hmm. at the gate. Um, you had to be masked. Um, and we took our masks it. off for one photo, <laughs> but you had to be masked and they were, they were monitoring um, occupancy. Yeah. So very you know. closely too. They were counting in, counting out. Yeah. So you had you know, to go in and out one door. Yeah. And I'm, 
I like that. Like, I almost hope they do that in the future because it wasn't as crowded. I actually, I have a tendency if it's too crowded, I I will walk by the booth and not bother. Whereas this time I didn't really want that excuse because it wasn't too crowded. It was comfortable and whatnot, but, and I didn't mind. We weren't outside very long if we had to. So, yeah. I think that having it in three different buildings helped that because if it had all been in one huge building, it would have taken a long time for people to go through it all and come out. Mm -hmm. But you know, it was fewer vendors in each building. So the turnaround was good and we didn't have to wait long. We, we weren't there right at the beginning. There might've been longer lineups at the start. When I pulled up, I, I waited in the car for you guys. And when I pulled in the lineup to get into the thing entirely was really long. And I said, Oh no, no, I'm going to wait right here. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was just, everyone was very positive and happy. I think we were all just happy to be back in our <laughs> happy to be out <laughs> happy place. Oh. Yeah. So that was, that was a really good time. Good show. It, it, yeah, had a, had a very good vibe. No, no, it was good. I was really happy there, but like it was comfortable. It was, and even you didn't yeah. get too hot cause it wasn't too crowded. Right. So, Hey, so out of that show, I actually didn't buy a ton of yarn. I wanted to show. Oh, oh, is it? oh I did buy the yarn. I had my um, heart set on was sold out by the time we got right. there, for um, both which of I us. can, for yes. both of us. Yeah. But we can get it again. So no big deal. Um, and I did buy some wool fat quarters, like felted wool fabric. Yep. Um, I don't have it here to show, but I picked up this stain. Now are the colors going to look good from the loving path? Yes. So loving path is Debbie from London and it's a sock set. It's a 50 grammar with the mini, which is perfect for me. Right. Cause you like your shorties. Yep. That's pretty. And great color. So there was a sample knit up in this hanging on the peg. Yeah, with I the remember that. Yeah, it was and nice. that caught my eye, and I yeah. So yeah. it's good to have samples. Yeah, I was in the way. She pushed me over, and knocked me to the ground. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, look. <laughs> so that was one of my treasures, and then oh. I bought um, some fiber for oh, yeah. like just unspun fiber, right? For <laughs> for felting, for making dryer balls. So while we were at the um St. Thomas like knitting at the little red mitten mm-hmm. the ladies were making these little felted acorns so we each got some of the little acorn caps and then mm-hmm. I bought the fiber and we didn't do it that weekend we actually just did it recently but we had a craft a zoom craft and we made the little felted acorns so here's a nice one so you felt little balls and then you get these ah, real acorn caps from under an oak tree and then you glue them on Aren't those cute? If you run out, call me. I got an oak tree right out front. <laughs> do you? I do. Save some. I, I want to make more. And there's a little beige one. They're That's just so new. cute. So yeah. that's the, the stuff you bought at, from the show? Yeah, I just bought a couple okay. bags from a few different places. This you, this white one, I think that was Rambouillet. I think I got that from Gainer. Um, mm-hmm. And this one is just, but you can tell when you're working with the fiber. It's really nice. This was a lot hairier and scratchier and yeah, yeah. but that was really fun. And there's, there are videos, just Google Mm -hmm. felted acorns and there are different techniques. You can dry felt them with like felt like with the needles. Um, we did wet. So you use like hot water and a little Mm -hmm. bit of dish soap and you like shake them and roll them like meatballs and it didn't take long. You just have to let them dry. It was a lot of fun. So I have a little plate full of. Oh, that's cute. That's cute. Yeah, um, super fun. I bought uh, I bought one skein of this because I thought it was so cool. It's actually fifty percent merino and it's fifty percent husky, and it's Poppy's pom pom. Oh. I just thought that was so cool. That's neat. Yeah, so it it feels different. It feels like there's a density to it. Like it doesn't feel light the way merino normally mm-hmm. does. So yeah, so I bought that. I thought that was kind of cool. We were there. Yeah, she had other unusual animal fiber combos she had uh mal uh what's it called samoid Mm -hmm. and she had uh bernie's mountain dog yeah yeah that one was kind of neat because it's naturally three-tone color so but i thought the husky it felt really nice like it so yeah 
might as well. Yeah. My, daughter has, my daughter has a hat from way back when, and we still have it somewhere in her, like her memory box, but a girlfriend, Brenda, hi B, um, made it for her. And it actually, and it's Merino Samoid, but the haze on it, like the, the halo is so amazing and it's so gorgeous and it's so warm, but yeah, so we have that yeah. kind of thought it would be warm. And no, it never smells well, like wet dog. Never smells like wet <laughs> dog. She gets that all the time. <laughs> but yeah. Speaking of warm, that's a good oh. segue. So I joined the Toronto Knitters Guild this year because for oh, this yeah. year, all of their meetings are virtual on Zoom. So it doesn't matter where you live. You don't have to travel to go to a meeting. So you get the benefit of the membership. Um, plus, and they have guest speakers at every meeting, at least so far. And you get, there are special membership discounts to um, local yarn stores and, and other participating vendors. So the first meeting I attended this season was, uh, the, the guest was Nunavut Kiviet. <laughs> and let me tell you, I learned a lot. So I, I won't, I won't like give you a lesson here, but just to summarize a few things. Did you see Kill Bill when L Driver was like, listen up, this pertains to you. Okay. <laughs> so Kiviet, if you've heard of it is, so it's actually the downy, like the very fine under fiber of the coat on um, generally muskox, but actually the, what we learned the Inuit word Kiviet refers to that type of fiber, but it could be from different animals. So it's not specifically muskox and you can get, you know, different yarns with different things. Um, but only the, I think it's like about a third of their coat is that really fine, mm -hmm. fluffy, super soft, warm. Um, it's not wool, wool's from sheep, it's hair. And because it's not like a wool, um, it won't shrink or felt just like our hair doesn't, right? It, it doesn't shrink or felt. So it's, and the other thing was um, because it's not barbed, it's non-elastic, well, it doesn't shrink or felt, but it's also non-elastic. So he actually said, cause I initially was gonna buy some 100% Kiviet and maybe make some mittens or a hat. Mittens would be fine, but he said for a hat where you want that stretch for ribbing, it's not ideal in that way because it just doesn't have elasticity. Mm -hmm. So it's great for scarves and shawls and things like that. Um, it's like a nice little small cowl around your neck. Which yeah. keep it so warm. So they do have hundred percent Kiviet, but they also have a lot of blends and I bought some blends. Mm -hmm. And so I bought two skeins of this plum colored. Oh, and their fibers are all, um, they're, they tend to be darker because they don't bleach the yarn. And so if you see Kiviet that's lighter colored, um, it's probably been processed more to take the dye, like to lighten it. So lighten this it. is all sort of dyed on its natural brown color. Um, so this is 50% Kiviet, 40% super fine merino, and 10% silk. And it's a two ply, so fingering. Mm -hmm. And I got two plums and two of this color, which is, I think, just, I think it's just the natural color or a natural color it's pretty it doesn't have a name yes and it's it's very soft even for being like it's 50 percent kiviet and then i got because i couldn't just just stop there and i couldn't decide what i wanted and we had a discount for that like for the show like because they put on the meeting mm -hmm. for the knitters guild there was a nice discount that we had so i took advantage of that and i bought this is i think this is a dk it's 30% Kiviet, 60% super fine merino, and 10% silk. This color is storm, and then this is the natural. It's pretty. It's really nice. And I got the sock yarn. <laughs> so the sock yarn, the Kiviet sock yarn is 30% Kiviet, 50% merino, 20% nylon. And mm -hmm. I just got a, there's 400 yards in three and a half ounces. So it's in ounces, not grams. So mm -hmm. I bought some sock yarn so I can make some socks. I think I got, that's what this one is. Two of those. Okay. Okay. Nice. So Kiviet, they actually, it's harvested from muskox that are hunted by local people, indigenous people, um, as well as like the, 
the company owners, there's their uh, research scientists that live up there. And mm -hmm. um, it's very well managed, the harvest. So they only have like a certain number of tags. And um, a lot of people, I thought that Kiviet was um, collected from the animal, like whatever. And that is not always the case. So he said that um, you don't just find clumps of kiviet lying around. <laughs> First of all, it's like tundra. So there's no, like if something falls off, it's just going to blow in the wind, right? But it would be, it, it because it's a hair, it gets very brittle if it's left out in the elements. And it, you'd have to do that for like years to collect enough to do anything with. Mm -hmm. um, he said the animals, like you might have one muskox for every he said 20 to 30 miles. So it's not like there's just hundreds of them. You can gather a big clump of kiviet. And there are some farms that um, research farms and they will comb some of it out. Uh, mm -hmm. But there's only a few of those. So good to know that, you know, and it's part of, um, you know, the, the indigenous people and the people that live up north. It's very much part of, you know, use all of the animal. They use the hides. They and they hire local people to do knitting, mm -hmm. to knit samples for them. So they involve local people in their business. That's, which is really That's awesome. Nice. Yeah. And it's, it's super warm. I think it's something like eight times warmer than wool. Like it's just, yeah, it's a very nice, it's a very nice yarn. And I, while I did not buy a hundred percent kiviet, I have felt it at a show and it's the softest thing ever. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. So I am going to make mittens with the plum and whichever natural color. Maybe that's what this big one is. I am going to make some mittens and nice. maybe a hat and socks. Yeah. That's good. That's awesome. Yeah. And the next Toronto Knitters Guild meeting, the special guest was um, Earl, Bar Earl Bacher, who make the Earl Bacher Gearheart circular sock knitting machines, the new ones. So I have wanted one of those for a couple of years and I ordered one after the show, but it was a really interesting presentation. So I'll just quickly summarize. So Earl Bacher was a machine shop, right? They're in the States. They are, they're machinists. They do very precise, like precision machinery, machining. They make gears. So I guess a couple of years ago, it was, oh, what year did they say? I didn't write notes. Her father, I'm going to, I think it was around 10 years ago. Her father was going to retire and he took a few months off and came back and said he had this project and he had somehow acquired this circular sock knitting machine. So it was a gear heart, um, an older one, and it was all in pieces and he wanted to, you know, figure out how this thing worked, et cetera. And they actually got a woman to come see them who was sort of very familiar with these older, with the Gearheart sock knitting machines. Um, she helped them get it assembled and explain how everything worked. So he actually decided to try making one and he would take a piece and then they would machine it and get it perfect. And he'd put the new piece on and make sure it worked with the original machine, et cetera. So he figured out how to build a new machine and then they decided to sell them so it's a replica because gear uh gearheart isn't you know he's gone like he's passed away but he um there are still a lot around and there are companies that do refurb them um mm -hmm. and they actually talked to i think it was the grandson of the mr gearheart the original and asked if they could, if he would mind if they used that name for their machine and he's like not at all in this industry and was thrilled that someone was going to do that. So it's not um, made by the same people, but it is a replica of one of the actual machines. And they use like aircraft quality metal. Like it's, it's very well made, etc. They have excellent support, lots of help. So it's going to take a few months for my machine to be built and it's underway and you can get, there are hundreds of colors you can get um, your machine coated in like the colored metal, like coating, it's painted. I'm having trouble talking today. It's and so yeah. excited. <laughs> so I'll, uh, when that comes in, we'll have to do a special episode. Yeah. Just, you know, I'll do a separate one about um, unboxing as well as once I learn how to use the thing. 
um, how it works. So that's going to be fun. It'll be good though. And I still want to knit socks, of course, but I'll never knit, you know, if I want to knit some for someone else, like a plain vanilla sock, I can crank the tube. You can actually do a heel flap and gusset yep. on the machine and toes, I believe, and ribbing. So I did order ribbers so I can do ribbing. So you can do all that on a sock. It doesn't all have to be afterthought heels and you don't have to hand knit any mm -hmm. of it. If you, if I learn how to do that properly, we'll see. <laughs> We'll see if we can teach this old dog some new tricks because I think right. that's going to be a bit of a learning curve. One more thing I did buy at Woolstock. Will it's this little mini loom by Chip and Sparrow. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got one, did you? Very cool. Yeah. So you can make like coasters, little patches. And then, um, you know, this is a small one. She had all different sizes. She had round ones. So I want to do it to make some little coasters mm -hmm. to oh, try. That's a cool idea. Yeah. The mug cool. rugs. Yeah. Right. So yeah. When we were at Woolstock, I bought another sweater quantity of twin oak yarns. <laughs> I have issues. So I bought one and it was funny because when I got home, I found a sweater I wanted to make. I had to order more. So yeah, but that was my excitement there. And you know, do you remember, um, Marianne's friend that she met yes yeah so while we were there um Marianne connected ahead of time with uh a friend so Marianne was a figure skating coach for years yes. and um like she took skaters like to like national level competitions and so a former student of hers uh, was planning on going to the yarn show. So they connected and had a good um, reunion there. And her name was Kimberly. So Kimberly's husband, oh, she was wearing a sweater that had these really cool buttons. It was, right? uh, yeah, it was the antler buttons. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we were talking about that. And she said that her husband has an account. It's called Muskoka Turner. And I he went, made them. Yeah, he, he made, made the buttons. He made the buttons. But um on Instagram, his name is Muskoka Turner. So I went on and he has these beautiful Christmas decorations. They look like um, the old style bulbs, but they're actually made out of wood. So this is the first one that I fell in love with. And it's like, an you can't see it because my sweater, but it's ebony. So it's an ebony wood with a little, and you can see all that. Neat. So yeah, what? Isn't that cute? And yeah. then this one, which I think is... <gasps> a cherry with the ebony just that's got the isn't that it looks so like marble i know it's gorgeous eh so there's christmas decorations and this is the last one i just ordered them for our christmas tree three of them because there's three in the family right so aren't they beautiful nice. yes. and they're so like they're so well sanded they feel like glass but he did such a great job of them and it's uh yeah so Muskoka Turner is his, uh, is his nice. Name. Yeah. So I got those in the mail. They came in the mail, lickety split. As soon as I picked three, they were in the mail, but I couldn't. Yeah. Pretty nice. nice. So that's part of my Christmas shopping done. So knitting. Knitting. Oh, do you want to do what? Are you wearing? I'm Are not you wearing anything. You know what? I was okay. going to wear my, um, I was going to wear my new, uh, Leo and Roxy, but it's too hot. I'm too hot to wear it right now. We have no oh. snow and it's really warm out. We've been keeping our house on the cool side so I can comfortably wear my sweater today. Well, our heat's not on. Like we don't have heat on, yeah. but yeah. it's so nice out. Yeah. And I'm so used to living in a ice box that. Well, you've seen, you've all seen this before. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're new to us, by the way, thanks. Thanks for Jo joining thanks for watching us welcome you're coming back for those of you who are not <laughs> if you're new you haven't seen this before <laughs> so this is my ranunculus yeah, and, and it looks beautiful oh i love it and the yarn is um so soft the yarn is by jelen mm -hmm. and i can put that on the i'll put it in the drop down notes below it's by jelen and the colorway is called pour some sugar and it's her pure dk base which is 100% non superwash merino. And this is, first of all, there's like a halo to it. It's so soft. 
And it is so comfortable. It's hard to believe that it's not superwash. It's softer than superwash. I mean, it's just amazing. I just feel like I'm wearing a hug. So yeah. I love oh, it. Beautiful. Yeah. And I, when I made it, I used the, um, there was an, a pen or an addendum to the pattern that had some larger sizes. So I think I made the first larger size because there's quite a few. Nice. I'm trying to remember, but yeah. And I used about, I used about five skeins of GK. Love it. It looks beautiful. Yeah. And I, let's, should we start with FOs? No, let's start with FO. Oh, okay. You go. <laughs> what? Okay. So, um, I, I did part of something that, um, I did the Leo and Roxy, um, simple summer suit. <laughs> Sim so, yeah. What is it called? Super simple summer sweater. I did that with the, um, it's by Hoagie. Yes. So I did this and I did it in the, um, cotton wool blend by Leo and Roxy. So mm -hmm. I actually, I did a knit along for us. I did one. <laughs> So it's gorgeous. I love the color. Yeah. And I did the helical knitting just like, you know, cause I didn't, they look the same in the ske skeins, but I'm really glad, glad I did it. Cause it gives it a great, um, kind of gradient look type of thing. Yeah. Um, I did modify it. I did. I split the, I split the sleeves. Oh, I like that. Yeah. So I thought I'd try it because if I didn't really like it, then I could just stitch them and put a button. Do you know what I mean? So I thought mm -hmm. I'd try it. And uh, I made the hem longer at the back than the front, but yeah, mm. what a great sweater because you had, you did yours and I loved it. And I thought oh, I yeah. should really do one, but I really loved the way it turned out. Um, mm -hmm. The only thing is it's really warm. <laughs> yes. It's really warm. I think I'd like one in a cotton. <laughs> like just Yeah. For, yeah. For a, it, I, it wouldn't be a summer sweater for me. No, I mean, that's no. the name of it, but yeah, it's um, especially in the wool cotton blend. But you know, um, this is the first mm -hmm. of me using their wool cotton blend and I love it. I would so use mm -hmm. that for every sweater I can think of. Like yeah. it's just, it's really great. Yeah. So yeah, I was really happy with that. Um, of course I went down on, I went down a size and a half on, no, I went up a size and a half on the needles. So mm -hmm. it's all good, but yeah, it's just, I love it. I can't believe how much I wear it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that one. Nice. I have, okay. So in our last episode, I had this almost done. Oh, my, did you finish that? Yes. Oh, it looks beautiful. Yes. So this is the shift cowl. Mm -hmm. This was the original shift. The very first in the shift series, I believe. Did you have to sew that? Yeah. Okay. It doesn't look like it. You do. And it's really, I had to, you have to follow the schematic because while I was knitting it I kept thinking it was going to be um sewn together differently than it ended up being sewn together oh, okay, so okay. it's really cool though because it puts the pattern on the diagonal okay in the end right so um this is a great pattern and this shift stitch pattern is used in several Everything. other <laughs> patterns yeah mm -hmm. and um the pattern calls called for a couple of different yarns you really can do it any of them with just a few yarns so I had two self not striping but self gradiating so self color changing yarns um, the only thing is these yarns are now discontinued but I will tell you what they were those are the Louisa Harding are they not yeah but which um so they were Louisa Harding Lucy mm -hmm. and I used color six Aurora and color eight obsidian. And I just changed them. Like the pattern will have different sections. So yeah. when you change section, I just switched my main and my contrast. Oh, that's a cool that's idea all. then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's good. So it, uh, you can, you can switch. Once you get familiar with the pattern, you can change colors whenever the heck you want. But um, I just did that. So it's lovely. No, it looks good. Yeah, turn it sideways. Yeah. I just love it and all the colors in it. Isn't it beautiful? So colorful. So that's finished. Finally, that's like two and a half years. I know. <laughs> and mine's still sitting in a box. 
Um, and, and then I'll, since I'm talking shift, I also did the night shift shawls. So I, I did this one this summer and it's done. It was like almost done in the last episode. So looks good. That looks beautiful too. Yeah. It's so big. And if you, this is like wearing the coziest blanket. It's just lovely. And we used um, Noro Akari. So we, you haven't knit one yet, but did you buy yarn? I do have yarn. Yeah. I do have yarn. <laughs> and again, two different colorways, Noro Akari, and it comes in several different colors. And I just switched my main and contrast when the pattern section changed. Awesome. And yeah, it's huge and it's cozy and it's warm and it's actually fairly light because it's got a lot of cotton in this mm -hmm. blend. There's several, several fibers in the Noro Akari, but um, yeah. So that's also done. And I've worn it, used it lots, especially in the house. Like if it's a cool evening, I'll just use it like a blanket. Oh, nice. Good, good. Um, so I have a great nephew. It's my niece's son. And uh, I love knitting baby stuff because it's so fast. So I knit him a hat. <clears throat> and when I was knitting the hat, I just extended the space between the decreases. Oh yeah. So it kind of looks like this. Oh, it's like a little elf hat. Isn't that the cute? I love one? it. And I actually used it. Now, I um I don't know if I'm allowed to say her name, but so anyways, she said to me, I said, Do you want me to use superwash? Do you want me to use acrylic? And she says, use whatever you think that'll feel good, and I will take care of washing it. So she's she's been she's pretty good. So she's uh so I made this out of the okay, so it's the red. Retrosario, um, it's made in Portugal, it's the Mungo, and it is actually made from recycled cotton and recycled wool. And mm -hmm. it just, it feels really, it feels not, it feels like it's gonna be soft on the hands when you knit it, but it's not, like it's, it's kind of, it's, it's diff, it feels different. I don't know how to explain it, it just, but yeah, but once it's, once it's blocked, it feels so soft for a baby. It has a very tweedy look. I like it. It does. It's really cute. So that was, uh, yeah, it's the Mungo. So similar to that is Barocco Remix. Right, right. And I bought a sweater quantity of that from Little Red Mitten. Oh, nice. Yeah, I have to, to do, um, I bought two shades of gray to do a color work sweater. Now, is it, is that one, uh, is it like cotton and? I'll tell you in a second. Because this one is 50-50. And it's made in Portugal. Does the Mungo have synthetic fiber in it? No. Okay. So Remix does. Okay. Um, it's like about 15, 16 bucks a ball. And it is 30% nylon, 27% cotton, 24% acrylic, 10% silk, 9% linen. So it's about half synthetic fiber. Okay. So this one yeah. here is actually 50, 50% 50 cotton and 50% wool. Okay. So yeah, and, and, both, and both, fi both fibers are recycled. Yeah, the remix also, it's 100% recycled fibers, just so, a different blend. So yeah, nice. I'm reading the hat it just with little ear flaps. But then, you know, when you have a hat, you're gonna be cold. So you kind of need a little sweater. Oh, <gasps> Lisa. Isn't that cute? <laughs> yes. So it's made of the same colors, the same um, yarn, but it just feels so, I bought a sweater quantity for myself too. So, because <laughs> it feels so nice. I bought it in a light gray. So yeah, isn't that just so cute? So that one um, I bought, is called Dayton and it's a design by Josie Paquin. That's what it looks like. Okay, so you buy this pattern and it actually has from newborn, to men's extra large. Like it's got the full, like, cause I, I looked at the pattern, I was gonna print it off and it was like 20 something pages. And I'm like, what, <laughs> how complicated can it be? And it was just, it was so <laughs> many different sizes and stuff. So yeah. So for that, I made the two to four cause I wanna make it a bit bigger for them. And I used the four, I used a four millimeter needle and the Retrosario color nine is the, is it's like a blue. It's a navy type of thing. So, and okay. then I use the natural and the red, which is manga. Um, yeah, but I am so happy with that yarn. I would recommend it. It's just, it's beautiful. 
So yeah, nice. and the pattern was great. Where did, I actually where ordered did you source knitting loft. Mm -hmm. I got it from knitting loft. So yeah. Nice. And, uh, yeah. So it's so cute. I it's been it's basically been soaked and now it just has to make it to him. But there's other stuff I have to put in a big box to send on their merry way as I throw it over there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that was just oh, it's just right there I just had to put it I had to get it over top of my water but yeah it's just I am so happy with it it's so cute I'm gonna have to make me a hat too well I have one more fo awesome socks w wouldn't be an episode if I didn't have some finished socks right, right? So, look at these and that is the colors those are so pretty. 100%. So pretty. Zoom. Ooh. <laughs> they do. They look nice. Oh. <laughs> so I did a vanilla sock, heel flap and gusset. And the yarn is, it's a new Regia colorways. Uh, Arnon Carlos colorways. And that one is number 03882 right i think there's six or seven colorways oh nice so i got these at country yarns um, okay. she does have an it's a small yarn shop outside like out in the country near mm -hmm. petrolia and she does have a website and she does ship so you can like look and on her online inventory and she's very responsive i've actually ordered yeah. needles from her when i live up like since since i've moved and yeah she's really responsive she's great she's it's a cute yeah. little store so yeah. So I also bought that. I have that colorway, which was like the, the sort of burgundy pinks, but then I also got purple. Ooh, look at purples. that one. There's yeah. a pale blue speckles and this one. Oh, I like that one. That one's pretty. Yeah. Very cool. Nice. So I ordered those as well or, or bought those as well. Yeah. Oh, cool. So I, should I tell them what I've been busy with the craziness in my life? Okay. Yeah. So I knit four gnome bodies last year and I wasn't happy with the way the beard turned out. So my friend Dawn, yes, yes, that one over there, inspired me when she showed me what she was doing with her, um, or you, you were making the acorns, felting yeah. the acorns. And it just, it was like a light bulb moment. So um, I knit this guy's body last year. And I was thinking, <laughs> light bulb. When you said I was, felting the acorn I'm like did you make him little balls <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> they'd be hiding under his beard so anyway so <laughs> I wasn't happy with the beard and uh so I felted I knitted the beard I knit the beard and then I actually felted ringlets on it oh, isn't that adorable so and the other thing is if you look at his nose his nose I'm picking his nose for him but if you look at it it this is the color I actually took mm -hmm. a bunch of this here and I put it into a tea, like a tea mixture. So it gives it just a little bit of a tan color, like just a little bit off yeah. of like more of the off white. You can see it really in this guy, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So it just yeah. gives it a little bit off. What yarn is that? This is actually, um, these guys are made with, uh, Briggs and little. Mm -hmm. So there's four made with Briggs and little, um, it's their heritage. It's just hundred percent wool. So, but he turned out, they turned out so cute and it's actually the pattern by, um, imagined landscapes and, but they, she makes them smaller. I just made it a little bit bigger. Well, so is this, it worsted? What weight this, is it worsted? This is, this is more of an Aaron. It's an Aaron. Okay. So yeah. So he's just so cute. So yes. there's one, <laughs> two. I like that guy three <laughs> and four <laughs> hey freeze that's got to be the screen cap freeze <laughs> yeah, I'm laughing too hard. okay hold on hey, freeze okay <laughs> okay <laughs> okay so this guy here actually i bought this 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 one is for my daughter she liked him and I actually bought these, look at those curls. Aren't they beautiful? I bought yeah. these from Woolstock. 
Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. If anyone doesn't know, you don't have to like curl these yourself. You can buy the curled, the little packets of the curly locks. Yeah. I like this one. I like this one. Cause it does kind of give it that Santa, that Santa Claus, like messy hair look. So, so those were the four that I finished from last year. And yeah, they've just been sitting around waiting for a, you know, a beard and a nose. And then, um, <laughs> my niece, that little guy's mom, she, she saw them and she's like, Oh my gosh, I want one. And I said, okay, well, what color do you want? So her and her mom wanted one. And, uh, this is the ones that I knit for them. So again, but this time so I cute. added, I know they're so cute. I, eh? I added a little color work. Oh my gosh. A little bit on the sleeves. So yeah, they're pretty cute. You could, you know, so yeah. I love that color work. Isn't it cute? So I made another one. He's the opposite, but he makes me laugh. I just, this body cracks me up because you know how we never have perfect bodies, right? So there's this guy and he has color work, but his color work actually gives him an hourglass figure. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I need. That's so cute, right? Like, look at <laughs> Like he's got a little knot. So yeah, so I have to mail those out or send my husband down to see his family to drop them off. But they were nice. actually a lot of fun once I got, once I figured out what I was going to do. Cause They're I just, adorable. and you know what, there's nothing wrong with the, the pattern to knit the, knit the beard is amazing. It's so easy. It's mm -hmm. easy peasy, but I just kind of looked at it and I wanted a little, something a little bit different and that, and when you said felting, I'm like, I think we were on the phone or something. I'm like, I gotta go. I have to go. I gotta go now. <laughs> and you're like, okay. So you, you knit start. the beard. Uh, yeah. You knit I knit the beard. I knit, but then you the just, so did you just beard. needle punch the curly yeah, blocks I onto the, punch okay. them on and they don't like it. Yeah. You, yeah. No, they grab. So, yeah. Nice. And the other Love thing it. I did, the other thing I did, um, I always worry about things coming undone. Do you know what I mean? So like for the, you can't see it on this one, but what I did is the string is right here. So I needle punch there a little bit to kind of get the uh, end to make sure that it stays. So I did that. on. That's a great them. idea. You know what? Like, and I'm not using like the needle punch thing. I have actual a needle in my hand and just going like this. Right. Oh yeah. Because you know how you can get the, the one where it's got six needles in it and you can do that. I'm just using one. So yeah. So that was nice. Uh, I, That's actually, even if you're knitting a wool sweater and you have the end and you don't want it to pull through to the front, you can do a quick, a few yeah, quick just, punches to make it. Yeah. I just thought, cause in the arms it's, you tuck it in, but it's always hard to tuck in. Cause it's, so I thought I'd try that and it worked out really good. Yeah. So yeah, awesome. I, have, I have a whole bunch of gnomes. I got to pack up, but yeah, my daughter's like, I want, I want my gnome to have dark hair. Okay. So, mm -hmm. Did you also finish an adult sweater? I love that one. An adult sweater. Since our last episode, did you finish a sweater for you? I did. I finished my, um, yeah, my Leon Roxy. Oh, okay. That's the only one? Okay. No, it's not. I finished... <laughs> I finished a short, a short sleeve one, but I haven't blocked it yet. Okay. Yeah. So I'll okay. do that. I'll do that next time. Yeah. So, okay. It won't be three months later. No, no. It'll be sooner. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm whips? whips. Yeah. Okay. Can I go? Go. I'm, I can show this because she's already shown it on her podcast. So I'm doing a test knit for, um, cozy up knits. So this is a new hat pattern that Jamie put together and it's called toboggan day. Oh my gosh. That's and so cool. Is it beads? It's so cute. And it's. Okay. Is it beads or is it? No, no, it's no. So it's DK with mohair uh -huh. for the main color and the brim can fold up. Oh, nice. So the brim folds up or you can like make it slouchy. Uh -huh. And so I used, it's, it's just color work um with some garter so, oh, nice. I okay. so this, it's a garter this poking is, out yeah so this is um it's an old oak yarns she's not dying anymore but one of adrian's yarns it's a dk and it's called Beautiful. thaw yeah so i use this with just a, a natural colored mohair oh nice i, I have a whole bunch of debbie bliss angel mohair yeah. 
um, it was on clearance somewhere and I bought a whole bunch, right? As we do. Yep. So I have that. And then the color work, for Pete's sake, this is actually, this is the color work. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Blues and purples. And I picked this up actually at country yarns a couple of years ago. Um, I don't know if this girl is still dying, but, um, I think she was local to the area and she was called yarn and whatnot. And I'll check if she's still, I don't know if she's still dying yarn, mm -hmm. but it's just a pure, like it's a Highland wool, hundred percent. Highland beautiful. wool. Yeah. Gorgeous colors. So if she's still dying, I'll put it in our notes. Um, mm -hmm. I know she was, she sold a lot of, she made things and sold them. So a lot of finished products, but she was doing some hand dyeing Very and cool. I love it. So yeah, look at that. It's just a really cute really little good. It does look like beads, doesn't it? It did. Yeah. Yeah. So that's cool. That's basically the bump yeah. coming forward. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. So I'm just on the decreases now and then, oh, and it comes in, there's two sizes, mm -hmm. um, like an adult and a youth size in the pattern and it'll, it'll the pattern might even be out before you see our episode, but right. we'll, we'll be close. Yeah. So I'm just doing that. And it, I just thought cool. she had it on the, yep. Yeah, I, uh, it's really fun, really fun knit and fast. Um, do you have a whip? Oh, okay. I do actually. Um, I am making, it's called Lee Lanu. Lee Lanu. Um, and I'm making it with my, uh, twin oaks, uh, twin oaks yarn that I bought at, um, Woodstock. So I got my sweater quantity home in this from Woodstock and it is a two ply. And it's funny because I keep, I, I felt I was going to buy this at this pop-up show. And then I saw the other stuff and I'm like, no, I like that stuff. I'll get that stuff instead. Cause you know, I never need great quantities of yarn. Um, and then I went back to the show at Wood, Woolstock and I picked this, something made out of this. I'm like, oh, I said, I really like this. Which one is this? And she goes, it's the stuff you almost bought last time. And I'm like, okay, well, I need to buy it this time. So I bought it this time. And then I got home and I'm like, what kind of, like what sweater do I want to make with it? Cause it's kind of, I don't want to say it's rustic, but it's, it's a wool sweater. So I fell in love with this and I actually had one way back when, and it's just got the little, like the little fleck oh, in it. Yeah. And it's got it all around. So I started knitting that. And, um, but I had to call her because I needed a second color. So I'm like, hey, can I have this color? And she's like, yeah, you don't want this color. And I'm like, well, I don't know. And she says, so I said I wanted the light gray. And then she took a picture of the, the gray and the cream together. And I was like, ooh, I like that. So this is just the yeah. bottom so far. Oh, so yeah. Good choice. Doesn't it look good? Yes. So yeah, it looks, it looks funny inside because it's all stripey. And what I'm actually doing because I'm a tight knitter and I don't want it to suck in is I am actually knitting it like this. Inside out? Inside out. Yeah. I'm, and it's still, it's still a knit stitch all the way through. It's just, you have the sweater in front of you instead of the sweater behind the needles. So yeah. Yeah. So I'm finding that's really helping me a lot and it looks amazing. Nice. So, yeah. So here's the two colors. I'm going to tip more together. So I just really like the way they look together. And I thought, you know what? They do look good. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So that's what I'm working on now that I'm finished all the gnomes and stuff. Well, I have a sweater with. Oh, what you got? This has been on my needles for a while and it's packed into my big this is one of my bags. I love this fabric with all the birds. So I'm knitting Lilith by Thea mm -hmm. Coleman forever and ever and ever. I had put it down and then picked it up again. And so I was counting stitches to kind of figure out where I was. I was still on the yoke. It's a rag. Okay. And I'm counting, I thought, well, I'll count the sleeve stitches because it's shorter than the body. And then I'll know sort of where I am, right? <laughs> so I counted the sleeves between the two raglan increases. And then I'm looking at the body. And I realize one side, I had two sleeves. So I must have thought I was going to grow another arm. <laughs> so I'm glad I put it down and caught myself before I knit even more. Because I was happily knitting away my three sleeve sweater. So I had to tear back to the collar and start awesome. the yoke again because it, awesome. it went right back to the beginning, right? 
So That's here's cool. the collar. The, Isn't that the collar beautiful? Is beautiful? Yeah, it's beautiful. That's the, I'm just going to go so I can see myself. So that's the detail in the collar, like around the yeah. neck. And then it's not really a collar, it's a neck. Yeah. And then um, this yarn is, and it's showing up very blue, but it's a lot more greeny blue. Mm -hmm. So this yarn is Ginger Snap. It's I was going to say, you bought that at the pop up show at your house. I did a couple of years ago. And they didn't have um, a sweater quantity in any of these three colors so I bought enough to do a gradient so it's their Lux worsted base which is fantastic mm -hmm. and I'm just trying to find okay the colors so the first color is deco and yeah. I think they're still dying or at least some of these the first color is deco the next color oh that's pretty right there. yeah that color is griffin or is it the other way around? Okay, well, I'm not sure. One of them is Deco, one of them is Griffin. And then I'm down, down into the third color. I'm trying to peek. I'm trying to look. <laughs> oh, it looks nice. Which is Magpie. That's nice. So there's the, the gradient. Beautiful. Yeah. It turned out and really I'm doing good. It, I'm doing it helical. Mm -hmm. um, I have to try it on again because I'm I'm going to repeat this before the ribbing at the bottom mm -hmm. so I have to make I have to check how long it is um I might have might be able to go a little bit longer but okay. I'm getting close and That's then great. the sleeves I'm going to gradient as well but I'm going to do the same on the cuff oh cool that'll be yeah. good yeah so this is just I haven't knit on it for a couple of weeks because I've been waiting to I just you know because it's so hard to put it on and see if it's long enough yeah. But I've been knitting other things. I, I'm easily distracted. So that is super fun. And it's just, they're Lux bases. Like they have a Lux DK as well. It's a super wash and it's so nice. Love it. Love it. Do you want me to keep going? Yeah, that's, I'm done. I don't have any more. Okay. Rips. I have to figure out what I'm going to whip. What I'm going to whip up next. Okay. <laughs> well, I think I showed, it might've been a few episodes back. Um, I had started the painted be pebbles shawl. Oh yeah, which yeah. is by um, Forest City Knit Girls. And it was a pattern written to go with the Full Moon Fibers um, slub yarn. Yep. Oh, so yeah, yeah. I was gifted a skein. This is called the Mitten. I was gifted a skein of the Mittens colorway uh, by my friend Sandy last year. And I started it with the natural. So this is close. Um, and I had it about fast. I had it about halfway down. It was just hard to find a color that would go with it. And I didn't want to use like, uh, you have to be careful because I didn't want it to look too orangey. Like it's looking no, a little yeah. more orange. It's actually a little bit more like it's a terracotta, kind of a red brick color. So I decided I don't, I just didn't like it with the white. Um, so I tore it out and started again with this. Ooh, that looks good. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a Madeline Tosh. Mm -hmm. It's Madeline Tosh twist light that I've had in my stash for a while. I don't know if they're still dying this colorway, but if they are, it is called firewood. Okay. And yep. And I am almost done. So here I'll just find a section where you can see the yarn, the pattern there. It's beautiful. I like it. Mm. So it's an asymmetrical triangle and it's a garter with the occasional row of eyelets and it's a great pattern and, you know, great for great two color yarn pattern. Very well done. So I'm loving this and look, it matches my bag. I got this bag from Caroline Evertotes. It's actually a cross stitch bag. That's so cute. Yeah. With the cats. Oh, so cute. But yeah, that's a whip. Little red mitten. I just get into so much trouble when I'm there. <laughs> I was I there one weekend. There. I don't have to go there to get in trouble. <laughs> well, I was there one weekend and they have the overthrow wrap. They have a sample in store that um it's it's a pattern by Hokey Locatelli and it's mm -hmm. all mohair. Well, mohair, and then there's one skein of fingering. Yeah. And it's beautiful. And it there's a few different colors in it and um there are kits for it and I had no intention of ever knitting that shawl because I thought I'm not going to knit 
a big mohair shawl, right? Well, I was there one day and there were a couple of friends there and everyone was looking at the kits and I was just like, there's one kit that caught my eye. So um, these are the colors, excuse the crackling. It's all gradient grays with this one kind of mauvey color, which is right here. And this is a Malabrigo. Oh, and I don't have the tag here. I forget the name of it. It's a Malabrigo yarn, um, a Malabrigo sock yarn. So it's, so I started. <laughs> I'm in the brioche. It looks beautiful. Yeah, it's Perfect. actually very nice. Are you liking the brioche? No, uh, I would. It's basic brioche, but you know what? It's two strands of each color. So there's four strands of mohair in British. Okay. So it's fine. It's just that it's very slow. Mm -hmm. It's slow going and you don't dare make a mistake because tearing out mohair, especially four strands of it is like crazy nightmare. So yeah. So, and the whole pattern is just repeats of um, garter, stocking mm -hmm. stitch and brioche. And then it transitions I think this, this color will be next, like solid. This, this brioche right now is the gray and the mauve. Oh, that's pretty. And then it'll go the mauve and then it's going to go back to dark, gradiating darker grays. So yes. it's actually a, a, a fine, like it's, there's nothing wrong with the brioche section. It's just that the mohair is so slippery and. Um, and are you, are you using steel needles? I am. I, uh, I was going to use wood and then I thought, you know what? Now I'm just going to use. I'm just going to use my metal. So, so it's just slow, <laughs> but it's, it's fun. Yeah. It's a fun knit and it's, it's, I think I'm going to really like it. Like it's going to be very cozy. So very cool. I have a whip and it's a surprise for you. For me. Hmm. It is. I saw on Instagram, which is also, it used to be Pinterest was like a rabbit hole for me, but now no. it's Instagram. So no. I saw it just popped up in like, if you go on search, you get a whole bunch of suggestions, yeah. right? Like yeah. based on things that you've looked at before, <laughs> which is good. Cause it's things you like, it's related to what you normally look at. <laughs> so I saw this sock yarn and I thought it was so pretty. It's a Christmas, Christmassy colorway. Oh my gosh. That is so cute. Isn't it? That is so cute. Yeah. And so it's self patterning. Uh -huh. And I had to, I had to, I think the post that I saw it in was in German. So I had to click the translate and try and figure out what yarn it was. Well, the yarn is like Ferner Mally socks. Oh, nice. Oh, so there is some English on it, but it's German. Yeah. So then I was like, okay, where do I, where do I find this? yarn? Right. You know who I would have tried to find it through. Hmm. Uh, Verena what I did oh, how is she good so I messaged her and I said oh, Rita, unreal. do you have or can you get this yarn and that is she so wasn't awesome. I think her she her shop was closed for a few days and she was she said I have it I'll check my stock oh that's so, so cool so she sent me I said well if you have it it also comes in a blues which is very similar oh, it's got blues and grays that's cool so it kind of does the same type of pattern. Like, yeah yeah very, very wintry, right? Very wintry. So kind of Hanukkah. <laughs> Christmassy, wintry. Yeah, Hanukkah. So I asked for two of each. So oh, if you if you want them. Yeah, I love them. If you, so if cool. you just want one, if you want both, whatever. I ordered them. So that Yay. is so cool. So you got to talk so to her. How is she? She's good? Yeah, she's good. I They're love having, seeing her store. Um, yeah, someday. Wouldn't it be nice to go there and go see her store? I know. So this is um, Verena, who's been a friend of ours, a podcast follower right from the beginning. Yeah. And she bought um, her local yarn shop, uh, took over ownership of it. Yeah. And it's Sustat Vol. And Ooh, um, you said that very well, nicely. <laughs> I had to ask her. I actually got her to record it and send me the recording of how she says it. So I remember well. that now. Yeah. Yeah. So That's she, cool. yeah, she shipped it to me, which is fantastic. That's so awesome. and Lisa, 
this is so soft. This is like, it's a wool. It's a hundred percent wool. No, it's got nylon. Yeah. 75, 25 mm-hmm. virgin wool and polyamide, <clears throat> but it's, um, it's so squishy. Like, look how big this ball no, that's is huge compared to the Regia. Right. Yeah. That's cool. So this is a little bit, I'd say it's a tiny bit, heavy. like it's more like a four ply. You could knit uh-huh. DK sock patterns in this, which I think Probably I actually right. did um, fewer stitches and a bigger needle to do these. Okay, cool. So yeah, but it is, it is noticeably softer than the Regia. Yeah, like that's the funny. Yeah. Of it, it's so nice. That is so cool. So you're going to love it. So I have these for you. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. Aren't, aren't they lovely? So that's my surprise. That's so gorgeous. Yeah. I just love it. Oh, Verena. How's oh, Verena? That is so good. <laughs> it looks awesome. Yeah. yeah. No, so thank you, Verena. Thank you, Verena. <laughs> Keeping that woman straight. <laughs> yeah. No, that's cool. Yeah. I think those are my only whips that I need to show. I have lots of whips, but I haven't made progress on any of I them. I don't. I don't. I've been trying to cut down on my whips. But yeah. Well, I haven't been trying to cut down. I'm just trying to, I keep starting new things, but. Oh no. So I just, yeah. I just found that I was, um, I've been so busy with everything else too. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like with the house and whatnot. So I haven't really started a lot of things, but I do have to start some pretty mindless stuff because I don't have anything to knit while I'm watching TV. Well, I got to get this yarn to you then so that you can, uh, and what's funny yeah. is we would be surprised how many times you can't count to three, <laughs> right? Cause I'm doing the color work and it's three, then a different, then the cream, three, then the cream, three, then the cream. And then you do yeah. two, two normal rows and then it's, you know, two want the cream and then three. So then it's yeah. all the way around. Yeah. And I'm like, Ooh, look at this part on TV uh, back up. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, that was new stash to me. You mm-hmm. have, what have you got for new stash? Um, I don't know if I've shown it, but I want to show my new bag. Can I show my new bag? Of course. Okay. So I bought this bag. Should I show the envelope it came in? Cause that was pretty of course. Funny. Okay. So this came in the mail, this came in the mail and it made me laugh. I just thought it was so priceless. It says, obviously you have great taste. <laughs> <laughs> And I opened it up and it's a bag that I ordered from Wild Strand. She had an update and it's my red and black buffalo plaid. But this thing nice. is huge. Like it's so big. That's and a sweater it's, bag. Right? It's a sweater quantity bag. And yeah, it's just, it's really pretty. So yeah, pretty nice. happy with that. It's a drawstring so I can lock the cat out. <laughs> yeah, so. Hmm. I have a, that reminded me, I have a new bag. Oh, what do you got? I don't think I had this for the last episode. I think it's since I ordered this bag from Ginger Snap. No, that's a pretty one. Oh, that's the one you ordered with the funny top. No, nope. it's nope. their usual medicine. Like yeah, the, the medicine bag one. That's yeah, cool. I think yeah. most of their, almost all of their, or if not all other than tote bags, but it's glow in the dark. These little fireflies will glow in the dark. Isn't that I cute? Love- and I love the oh, colors. That woman, that Kim is so talented at times. It's like just. Yes. They yeah. have, they have a lot of custom fa- uh, fabrics. So you get some really unique things from them. I'm just, everything's going to wiggle. I'm just moving some cords here. And then I ordered another pixel set. So this is radiant orchid frenzy, full set, puffy fingering. <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. No, don't. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought it was really cute. So it it's, it's a. Uh, a pixel fade like another one of their pixel or pixel gradients yeah that's cool yeah in the bag i love it bag. what else oh did you yeah i know you saw because i think i sent it to you they have ginger snap has that new buffalo plaid dk sauce i know set. right isn't that gorgeous i ordered it i ordered it did you <laughs> yeah I was well they sold out but they're doing pre-orders for okay. more i don't know that's if those good. are sold out but mm-hmm. yeah that's cool then. Yeah. It made me think when you, as soon as you showed that bag, you know what else I, this is, I, um, when the Leo and the Roxy came out and their basics, mm-hmm. the one thing I missed was a gray. 
So they got a gray. It's pretty nice. So I'm trying. Well, they had a very, very light gray, but oh, that's yeah. the other one. It's called pencil. Mm -hmm. Is it called pencil? Pencil, pencil point. point. Yeah. So that's, I think that's my next whip. I just have to. Yeah. Assume. Yeah. A sweater. Mm -hmm. I am. Um, I'm definitely, I have sweaters on the brain. So I wanted the gold wing. Obviously I'm supposed to be knitting that with Marianne. Mm -hmm. Um, the remix I bought to do Cardoon by Isabel Kramer. Yeah. Yeah. And actually I have, I didn't show those colors when I held it up, but it's primarily the medium gray, but then the color work is like a denim blue, like a darker oh, nice. blue. That'll so be it'll pretty. be a little different. Yeah. yeah. But I've been ordering. So I'm going to show a couple of quantities I got here. So Yarn Inc. had her sweary Did you sets. see that? Did you see the Christmas I, colors they had? Yeah. Yeah. So I ordered this gradient set you can see the names okay and it's all this set was called all the f's these colors are bang on like that is how bright and beautiful they are so this is fingering so i can do another um rocket tee or something like that it'd be kind of cool in a fade too yeah that's exactly what i'm going to do with them yep that's cool beautiful and then so that was yarning and then i'd had my eye on a set she'd shown a few times. So when I was went in to order this, she still had these in stock. Sorry, it's so crappily. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's pretty. I'm getting the glare there. That's very pretty. Yeah, very bluey, greeny, gray. Nice. And this is DK. Mm -hmm. I think this was called the Mermaid, Mermaid Tales or something set. That's cool. So it's it's DK. So I could do like this was five skeins of DK. So I could do something like the binoculars. That's good. That's cool. Yeah. Gorgeous. I could do a love note or something. Yeah. Or just not do the lace and just do the, like a just because it's going to be gradient, right? So yeah. yeah. You know, ranunculus is still, I keep seeing it. Like week after week, it keeps popping up in Ravelry's top 20. Like it's still yeah. such yeah. a popular pattern. And because it's just fantastic to knit. No, no, it's pretty. So I'm going to make more crackles. You're just all crackly today. <laughs> Done. There. I don't know if I have too much else to show. No. The, um, I did order the, um, Grocery Girls had a winter kit with mm -hmm. uh, Shirley Bryan sock yarn. Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Those. Okay. So oh, socks. Speaking of, yeah, I do have another whip. One minute. I'm going to find them. They're right here. Yes. Speaking of Shirley Bryan. I so love it. If you haven't heard of Shirley Bryan yarns, then you have now. Um, <laughs> the dyer, Becky, does an amazing job with gradients. Look at that, eh? Who are those for? Yeah. These are these are actually a gift for someone. I don't okay. think she watches, but I won't say it on out loud just in case. They're going to be a Christmas gift for someone. So okay. I don't know her exact shoe size, and I did them toe up oh. because I wanted to use the whole skein. Yeah, and I made them. I did increases in the leg to make it mm -hmm. slouchy, right? Okay, yeah. I, don't yeah. Have, I should put it on a sock blocker. So I used the magic heel. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a ribbed heel. So it's kind of like a tube sock with a ribbed heel. And the nice thing is it, I don't have to know her exact shoe size because oh. it's going to fit her foot wherever her heel falls exactly. Right. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then um, toe up, it's just vanilla in the foot and then vanilla, except I did increases. So I did an increase kind of like about a, a third of the way in on each side, okay. front and back. I did it magic loop. So every 10 rows, I did an increase. So I had four increases total for the round, every 10 rows. That's all I did. And then you just go till you literally run out and you just awesome. bind up. That's yep. cool. Yeah. This colorway is, it's something like, are you still watching? Are you still watching? Yes, I am. Now I feel judged. You know how right. Netflix asks you after a while, are you still watching? Yes. So aren't those gorgeous? So I ordered the grocery girls um, mm -hmm. box with, uh, with Becky's yarn right. and it had a few little extras. There's a really lovely candle, um, some other little goodies in there. 
skirt. So they did have some left not too long ago. I don't know if there's any left still, but it was it was very nice, very nice set. Very cool. I don't know what I'm gonna make. I would love to hold those doubles. So Jody did two hats, like she held the skeins double, starting at the same point, but mm -hmm. um and now, and Jody, did two. I was noticing Jody has some pretty nice hat patterns. Did you see the one she just put out yesterday? No. I bought it and I went to, to the maps and ordered the yarn. Does it have a name? Monday hat. It's DK and mohair. Okay, nice. Very nice. There. So, yeah, I really like that with the DK and the mohair. So, I don't know. I, uh, yeah, I thought I like the yarn too. So I went and ordered it. Go for uh, it. Um, so what we're going to talk about, we still have to do a giveaways and stuff. We have to do giveaways. Yeah. yeah. We have been, uh, kind of lax on <laughs> our knit alongs, So that's going to improve, but Leo and Roxy, the all things Leo and Roxy make along has yep. been running for some time and we owe people some prizes we do okay so we drew random numbers and we have four prizes for this one so leo and roxy when they launched their basics line they sent us um a box a sample box with some skeins and some mini skeins and to do what we wanted with so we each kept some of our box to use and we have some to put together for giveaways. We bought more to add to it. We did buy. Yes. <laughs> yes. So we have, we drew, we did random numbers and we have four, I just covered them up, four winners. So sort of the main, the first prize, the grand prize is going to be this this set so there's a skein of a full skein of pebble mm -hmm. and then these minis oh there's one more there's a red one nope I think it fell out of the box but there's like a red color so yeah so these and I have a little red mitten tote bag which I just couldn't find but it's a nice big um yeah. canvas tote bag so that will be going so the winner of that was number 50 um her Ravelry name is Farquist her name is Janet and I'll put a picture up on the screen. So she knit an absolutely beautiful sweater and Janet, we are going to be sending you that prize uh, as long as you get in touch with us and give us your mailing address. So congratulations. Um, the next one you have the yarn for uh, it. You have three, the three larger skeins that you put into a kit. Mm -hmm. And that the winner of that was number 23, who was Westover, who we know who that that's Barb. Yep. Congratulations, Barb. So uh, we'll put her picture of her. She did a shawl. Um, yep. We'll put that on the screen. Then we had the next prize was number 13, Sack Harwood. That's Sandy. We know Sandy. She is a prolific knitter. And you know what? Thank you, Sandy, for always participating in our knit alongs. Like she's just right? such an enthusiastic knitter and fan um, and friend. So Sandy knit, uh, I think it was a Casa Pinka shawl. And oh, wow. Sandy, we have these coming to you. Yay! So this is Majestic, Raspberry, and Pacific Point. There we go. It's like a, a dark blue, I think, raspberry hair. Yeah. So that's for Sandy. And then the last set you have, right? A bunch of mini skeins. And the winner of that was number two, who was Marg. Yeah. Um, and Marg knit a pair of beautiful socks. That picture I'm going to put on the screen. Mm -hmm. And it's a collection of just all kinds of assorted of their mini skeins. Yeah. Yeah. So congratulations, Mark. Thanks everyone for participating. And we're sorry we took so long to draw those, but um, we're excited to get those sent out to you. Yeah, definitely. 
yeah and that that's kind of um we have a few other uh knit alongs going mm -hmm. on so we have the winter is coming which is any winter accessory hats mitts shawls um i think we left socks out of this one because we you know there's always stuff for socks right did we did we decide on an end date for that i think it was end of december okay i'll double check and what else do we Oops, have wrong? well i was just gonna double check the winter is coming there's 100 entries so far okay oh we didn't say i think we said end of december okay oh no end of november okay end of november so okay. next we will have to do some reminders so next episode we'll draw winners from that okay perfect i might leave it open just a little hint i might leave it open for an extra week or two till we record again i would so probably do that just check if it's not locked you can still enter yeah. <laughs> there's there's some really great entries in there and you can double enter so the knits and pieces oh, yeah. podcast noelle and kelly they're doing a knit along i think it's called woolly well, winter warm winter, winter woolens something yeah, like that back. um and it's very similar so winter accessories yeah. so they've just started that knit along and so if you've got anything done that you can enter in ours before the we record again in the next few weeks and then you can also enter in theirs so Perfect. check that out and was there another one yeah. we were going yes the sweater any sweater any weather and there's already 35 34 entries nice lots of nice sweaters so yep that, we decide, do we have an end date on that that one's in the new year isn't it that one's for sure end of december okay Oh, I, oh, I wrote end of November. That's no, I'm changing that. End of you December. know what? Why don't we make it till January? End of January? Yeah. Done. End of January. Just I'll because an update. You know everybody gives them a little extra time in case they're, uh, yeah. Stuff well, and then maybe yeah. I'll finish Lilith by then. <laughs> right. I got to get going because I got to finish this one then. So, yeah. All right. Well, yeah. that's like we're done. That's about it. I think so. I think we're done. Oh, one more thing. So we mentioned Instagram that we're going to be doing the, the giveaway. Yeah. Don't I'm you know, just, just wait till you're my no, age. It was one of those things where it's like, why did I come in this room again? What did I need in this room again? <laughs> I know there was something else. There is something else. We are going to, we're just giveaway crazy. We are also going to do a giveaway um, An Instagram. right here on YouTube. No, well, we, the Instagram one, we talked about at the beginning of the okay. episode as well. Okay. So, so yes, make sure you're following us on Instagram. We're going to do one here on YouTube. What? Yeah. So we have this, we have a prize stash, right? That we need to start getting rid of. Give it away, give it away, this give is, it away now. <laughs> this is a Timber Yarns colorway called Holiday Magic. Oh, that's beautiful. A mini skein of Aruba. So it's very bright, cheerful holiday colors, festive, festive colors. So yeah. So we're going to give this away. So um, to enter, you need to comment below this episode. And just use the word holiday in your comment, if you want to enter to win this. What about Holly? Or, what the, or Holly? What's, the, what's the name of that? Holiday magic. Yeah, just yeah. Holiday, holiday is a lot more. Yeah. You can you make more comments, so you can just write the word holiday, mm -hmm. or you can tell us something your favorite thing to do over the holidays. The holiday. mm -hmm. Um, what you're knitting for the holiday? What you're yeah? What you're getting? You're going for the holidays? Are you taking? Are you going anywhere over the holidays? Okay, but it has to be the same. I'll maybe I can search on both holiday and holidays. I think, mm -hmm. but. Or maybe it'll find it if it's holidays. But for sure, we want the word holiday. So as long as you put that word in your comment, we will we can do a search for words in the comment and draw a random winner that way. Yeah. Sounds so like we can do that. Um, we'll probably do that, well, for our next episode. Very cool. Which we're looking at in a couple of weeks, right? Yeah, we have scheduled it. Yeah, we scheduled it. So we're hoping that it works. We've got time booked. Each of us has time set aside. 
yeah. yeah, that was a lot of fun. That's cool. Very good. I have to go yeah. put my all my men in box and get them ready to ship out. <laughs> Those are, take a couple pictures first. You got to take some pictures too. of them. I'm going to take a couple yeah. pictures of them. I might take them outside. So mm-hmm. it'd be cute if you had snow, but you can put know. them in the snow. There's no snow. No. <laughs> you've had, you've had snow. It's just gone. Yeah. It's just gone. Yeah. I might line them all up all in front, all in the front grill of the Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Or put them They're all adorable. in the window. <laughs> well, see, that's the thing. A lot of people look at those gnomes and she has another knit along going oh. on right now. I know um, a mystery knit along. So you look at those gnome patterns and you think, oh, I don't want to knit. Like you don't have to, you can use a heavier weight yarn and make a bigger you know what one. Too is, okay. So I, I did sew on and I hate sewing stuff, but I sewed on the, the beards and I sewed on the noses, but I actually, in a lot of situations, I actually knit the arms beforehand. So when it came to placement, I just basically had the yarn, had the arms and I knit two together, one off the arm and one off the body. And they're in there. I don't have to sew them on later. Oh, yeah. I don't have to do any of that. Smart. So little things yeah. where you can, if you read the pattern up front, you can, there's a couple of places yeah. where you can make it more. So it's not, yeah. But really this. You also this, don't have to, you don't have to do arms. No. You can, they, like she has a lot of different styles. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. so yeah. 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 And if you haven't looked at her patterns, I think the first one, which was never not gnoming yeah. is the most, it's a very basic, but there's that's a couple of different before. styles yep. in that pattern. Yeah. And that's the one you use. Yeah. That's the one I have too. If you look at her Instagram, oh, right, imagine it, landscapes, imagine landscapes. It's that's what she is. You can find. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Awesome. Okay. Hey. All right. It's good to see you. It's good to see you too. It was funny because the last time we talked was um, my internet was unstable, but we kind of did one of those talky afternoons and we were doing the robot. Yeah. <laughs> it was kind of fun. I, I hope today's better. There might be some jerky spots. Um, this is our li- This is how it's going to be if we're yeah. going to stay together. So we hope nobody minds. We do our best. We try our best to and... keep a long distance relationship going. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Oh, right. thank goodness for for the internet and Zoom and all the things. Right, I know. Right, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. All right, yeah. Well, we should say okay. Goodbye. Okay, take care. Happy, Happy knitting, everyone. We'll see you. Make soon time to make something.